activating a spiritual consciousness. As a knowing one, I must note that I am at the end of my human existence. Comma, please enjoy. The spirit. The being spirit is a fragment of the universal creational conscience force fixed with creative laws in order to evolve. Also a shard pieced from the planetary neutral mass of spiritual energy. What is the difference in the consciousness and its spirit? The consciousness is the spirit's tool for evolution. The consciousness is a fine material, whereas the spirit is fine energetic. The being spirit is a neutral life-giving energetic form. Primordial equals existing at or from the beginning of time primeval. Universal consciousness has already determined respectively predetermined where all life in the universe will go. But at the same time, it offers flexibility or variation as of how to get there. About the universe. The material belt renewal period, this process occurs every 49 billion years. So we see here, it tells me to go down here real quick. The material belt itself has its own form of reincarnation process. This process occurs every 49 billion years, all right? All belts, one through seven, collapse upon the contraction of the universe, which is the finality of its existence as a lowest universe form. This process occurs every 311 trillion and 40 billion years. This is the death of the universe, also known as the sleep period. All seven belts of creation collapse into the primordial core. Total consciousness or being is spread across multiple layers or dimensions or spaces of existence. The spirit or fine energetic layers are simultaneously operating in their spaces or dimensions adjacent next to the half material and material counterparts, the last of which also includes the conscious consciousness. For layman's understanding, this means to include all the history slash culture associated with the words and their meaning. Most of this information is mixed between my own data storage bank that I get impulse from the overall consciousness block of Earth or respectively my subconsciousness. Also from Jetty's, um, Billy Myers, and a couple of other scientists. What is the space that the wake period is at the forefront? The conscious consciousness is at the forefront during the wake period, but not only part or perception of being, if the conscious consciousness is at the forefront and the conscious consciousness is of a fine material nature, then this belongs to the coarse matter material belt. The subconsciousness is a link between dimensions, space, realms, fragment, of the overall encompassing makeup of the spirit form. The unconscious is the part before the conscious consciousness that has a much higher perceptual speed. It processes data such as the thoughts and impulses. Therefore, when the conscious consciousness gets the information, it often comes up as feeling data, feelings. The thoughts come before the feeling. All right. Every human being is a code of purpose of existence, symbolizing themselves as a relative expression, conveying, absorbing, and repetitively giving energy in all directions in order to understand and take existence further. In the wound, character, psyche, personality. The human being forms their own basic personality, character, morality, and the state of their own psyche in the wound. In this form, everything works accordingly to the circumstances which influence it. This process creates stimulation for certain lines of thought, again, all of which directly affects the personality, character, morality, 
and the state of their own psyche in the wound. The psyche, a half material part and factor which within the material body of a life form of a human being regulates and looks after the material consciousness based feeling. Also, the psyche looks after the material consciousness, which is the conscious consciousness based thoughts or, you know, the conscious consciousness, the ego based thoughts in itself and a negative or positive consequence. From this results in a negative or positive unequalizedness or a neutral positive equalizedness. So let's just come right here. I'm going to draw an arrow, right? And let's just say that uh, you have a human being. So I'm going to draw a circle here. I'm going to draw a body here. I'm going to draw a hand here, a hand here, a leg here, and a leg here. So where the thought feeling world can actually be understood is in this section right here where the solar plexus is we were to draw a microscope so i'm gonna basically go into this it kind of looks like the infinity sign i would you know you would see a bunch of infinity signs of it a thought feeling world where the thoughts are trickling down so the thoughts are trickling down into it as like raindrops and when it hits this, they clash together, creating some type of infinity sign. This is uh, inner, me speaking energetically here. And then when these things come together, they radiate out into a respective field. So you have something going into itself, and then these pockets show it coming out itself. So uh, we get to understand the psyche as a thought-feeling world. Suffering. Suffering is the result of bad and good qualities. Suffering can arise from which is bad, evil, and negative, as well as from which that is excellent, good, and positive. The crucial factor with this is only how the human being faces up to the respective suffering in a particular case. This is because it is the thoughts that determine the case of the suffering, which which are either evaluated as depressive, destructive, or awful from a negative side, or as fostering, constructive, and evolutive from a neutral, positive side. The thinking determines the form of the effect. So if the suffering is equalized in a fostering, constructive, positive, and good thoughts, then the suffering is reduced and becomes the evolutive factor. This will always be the case for the human being because neutral, positive, equalized thoughts are so mightful that they will evolutively reach the relatively highest possible form. Whenever one has to go through something of a means of a specific challenge or a respective struggle, then I think it will be wise that one doesn't cry like a little baby every single day about what they are respectively ch being challenged by or going through, that they stand up as what they are essentially, which is a spirit form a, of a life giving nature here to respectively radiate this oscillating power of love. This can only correctly happen in this fashion by being neutral positive, by being calm and then allowing oneself to stand up for what is right in a logical manner, to know when to speak up and to know when not to. Again, in the past, I have said the spirit creates time. This means that time is created through the perception of how it is utilized by the consciousness. So in order to be more able to capture what's happening in a certain moment to enable to be more in control of it one must be calm or neutral positive to what's going on in order to access higher data in order to transmit it into the consciousness in order to respectively be a conduit of creation love free will human beings are masters of their thoughts and their might to maintain this, strong and healthy thoughts must be developed to also build up 
the inner equalizeness slash harmony. Human beings are determined to live by the principle of creation, which is the law of cause and effect. The human being is knowledgeable beyond compare in relation to the creational universal consciousness. Human beings are equipped with free will, the absolute freedom of action. The human being has to determine their way in every direction and regard absolutely in himself or herself. The human being is in every way responsible for their own thoughts and actions in every form and guiding principle. The human being by their self determines every and effect by means of their consciousness and thoughts independent of some kind of creationally provided influences. The human being must always vindicate themselves in every respect and in every case when it has to do with their thinking, actions, and bearing of responsibility. When, when it says the absolute freedom of action, I know a lot of scientists like to get into determinism. Now, yes, respectively, when it comes into understanding more about space and time, one could um, absolutely say that everything is predetermined, of course, because dealing with the understanding of energy and how electricity, electromagnetic waves oscillate back into the human being, we could say the speed of light um, goes so fast that it starts to bend back into itself. So this can get into the understanding of black holes and white holes. But not to make this so complicated and to simplify it down into layman's terms, we can say that every choice and every action is created through the responsibility of how the human being is allowing themselves to behave in a certain moment. And that's that, that's just as simple as that. If we hyper-focus on, oh, I may not be in control, oh, this, if we hyper-focus on those things, then that certainly can make someone go crazy. It's not our job to hyper-focus of being the actual future. Our job is to be a being of what's happening all together as a respective now, a relative eternity. Being one with the spirit form with what is going on in somebody's consciousness, therefore they are able to utilize themselves correspondingly to a certain experience. So say, I want to go get some water. Instead of saying, oh, this is predetermined, my subconscious is telling me to go, no, I just go get some water, clear my mind, drink it, take three breaths, and move on about my day. Of course, one may contemplate of what we allow ourselves to call determinism. But remember, if something of anything is determining anything, then it respectively goes back down to you. Because if there is something greater and you are here as an existence connected to it, then this would mean that both of you are one of the same. Just one is at a higher altitude of bringing these different connection points together while the lower is simply acting upon what the higher self is creating or processing. Emotions and animal instinct evolution. Emotions are spontaneous reflexive reactions of certain centers in the brain. These functions of emotions are also shared with animals. Animals are not able to contemplate their emotions. Animals cannot create feelings from emotions. Animals can only develop their own feelings through instinct and drive. Animals, because of their instinct consciousness, are not able to create any conscious, evolutive, and creative thoughts. Animals do have feelings which are of a kind which is instinct conscience or drive-based conscience. Animals do not have any conscious fundamental processing mechanisms. Human being emotions are pent up unintended feelings that have been swept away and explode such as anger, aggression, frustration, rage, etc. Emotions cannot be equalized. Emotions can trigger various stimuli in the brain, including neurological 
reactions, which can drastically affect the nervous system. Emotions can trigger adrenaline and provoke fight or flight responses, leading to a blockage in rationality and clear thinking of no self-control. Animals, birds, insects, fish, etc. all have their own split individual reincarnation cycle and even specific plants breeds no animal's spirit awakening energy is identical to the other so we know thoughts come before the feeling which must be equalized for balance based feelings then feelings come after the thoughts which can affect the human being in forms of happiness affection love joy intimacy friendliness connection unity sadness etc emotions however then are the result of the pent up unattended feelings this effect are of unequalized feelings or feelings slash thoughts that have not been properly tended to and dealt with so it is the effect of mishandling or misuse neglect etc of thoughts which become feelings wrong thoughts can create wrong feelings and if it is not grasped not grabbed and dealt with in time then it sinks into the emotion territory where it fosters rottens where where it festers rottens eventually to erupt gradually because anything that we take within ourselves is borrowed and we must emit it back into existence. So we must really understand what the human being, what this information is really saying about the human being. Anything that we take in ourselves, we must re-emit it out as an expression. So an example here is over positive and over negative thoughts radiate as emotions creating frustration, rage, anger, and madness, while as neutral positive thoughts create themselves into feelings, which is joy, happiness, affection, friendliness, sadness. Now, this is an example, right? Powers of the human being would be strength, rationality, intellect, self-discipline, self-control, self-achievement, fearlessness. Thought energy borrows its power from the universal cosmic electromagnetic force. Feelings are the radiation of thoughts. So we can see that the feelings are kind of going out, right? So the feelings are going out while the thoughts, the thoughts here are coming in. So I drew that arrow. Thoughts are going in. The feelings are going out. Right, and this creates a certain function to live with. Right, if you're not feeling joy, happiness in a respective, calm, respectable manner, then this can fester and rotten itself into being over positive, over negative, which manually or automatically over a specific duration of time can turn itself into something uncontrollable, which we know as emotions. Feelings and essence. Essence, the basic, real, and never changing constant nature of a thing or its significant individual feature or features. Feeling, transmuted thought sensation. Feelings are the past the point of thought. Feelings are past the point of thought transmuted sensation energy now we're going to talk a little bit about time past present future everything that has happened has already happened everything that has yet to happen is happening to happen we can see that the future falls into the past as the past goes this way it doesn't necessarily keep going this way. It kind of builds itself. So it keeps building itself into a storage bank. So when I point the arrow this way, it just means storage. All right, so it just means storage. What something is being stored as. 
So also what something is being stored as. All right. And then the present is the duration of time that exists in a specific uh, moment at which the conscious consciousness is prevailing itself as. And then the future is that transmutational energy that always is forwarding itself, respectively finding itself by awakening itself into a new. So this, you can take what you are right now. You're listening to this video. As time passes, you're respectively finding yourself aware of the respective future that's falling into you. And it's as simple as that. Now we go further. The past is the storage of space and time working as a pre-existing force. The present is the bubble which cycles the events of creation that have happened and will happen simultaneously. And the future is the storage bank of space and time which holds the direction of all possibilities. So we could say that the past is pre-existing and pre-existing force. The present is contemporary existing force. And the future is a subsequent existing transmutational force. Origin, neutral, chronopathic, creative impulses. Sorry, I had some water spill here. So, which act as a neutral energetic guideline, impulses to steer and provoke evolution. Essentially, this is the primary main chronopathic impulses that influence all of the universe to thereby evolve and follow a logical creative law framework. Future self impulses, which comes after origin chronopathic impulses, thereby the second form, respectively, the second classification of future self impulses to exist are origin chronopathic neutral creative impulses that steer and guide evolution and order present self which in this case of the universe mostly does not have any future self impulses of the second nature rather only the first nature origin neutral chronopathic creative impulses origin chronopathic creative impulses do not bear a future self of any kind, but only act as a completely neutral, energetic guide to steer evolution forward, or of a pure, creative, neutral, energetic form that has no shape. This deals with the impulses. The, in simple terms, everything of energy speaks to itself by impulses. Even right now, you hear me speaking, and through the words that vibrate out my mouth, these are still impulses. These are still, this is still a data processing mechanism that the brain, the conscious consciousness, the unconscious, the subconscious, and so on and so forth, gather together in different layers, passing data through each other, enabling a respective present to occur and record itself as being. From Contact Report 716, Earth and the original human beings. Earth was formed 5.5 billion years ago. 4.5 billion years ago, Earth began to cool down. Also around this time, the first plant life developed. Human beings originated in the north of Africa. Human beings evolved from a bacteria form which had to develop itself for millions of years and lived as a fish-like aquatic creature before it developed into a land creature and then into a further developed land creature life form. The original idea, creation idea equals spirit energetic creative impulse carrying the creative natural laws as a blueprint to create a universe, evolve it and sustain it. Human being idea equals subsurface, subconscious impulse emergence that floats to the consciousness, conscious consciousness that is, after the mass information relay network in the subconscious has accumulated enough data and explodes, quote unquote, like a big bang creating a human data. 
Delusion equals speaking of something that is not according to reality. The Psyche, page 58, topic starts off with the spirit healing. The power of the spirit must be stimulated by the power of the consciousness. To achieve this, long explanatory and advisory talks on a purely logical basis, which are essential, which stimulates the human being to think and act, which is what we're doing here. Death life. There is a 40 to 60 million year gap difference between the years spent in the material versus the years spent in the spirit side. There's only about 18 to 20 million years or so in the material. More time should be spent on the spirit side than the material side. So now we're going to go on to types of intelligences. We know that the maximum speed of thought is of the speed of light. The higher the person's speed of thought and combination is, the higher their intelligence should be. So when we say intelligence, what are we talking about here? Well, let's go through the different types of intelligence. Emotional intelligence, thought feeling intelligence, creative intelligence, musical intelligence, intellectual intelligence, individual intelligence, idea intelligence, fantasy intelligence, character intelligence, consciousness intelligence, and general intelligence. There's more. But we'll take these as a starting guideline and we'll also break it down by which each one actually defines itself as. Emotional intelligence deals with the perception slash <clears throat> comma interpretation and wielding of emotions. The after effect of feelings which emerge from pent up feelings over time that have gone unaccounted for leading to outbursts of anger, rage, etc. The higher the emotional intelligence, the greater the ability to identify and steer the emotions in a healthy, beneficial, and logical manner. Thought feeling intelligence deals with the awareness and comprehension of active conscious thoughts and their relationship to the transmuted after effect called feelings. The higher the thought feeling intelligence, the higher ability to profoundly comprehend the energy emissions from thoughts that erupt as feelings of all kinds, ranging from bursts of joy, happiness, love, freedom, and even to comprehend sadness and sorrow. Creative intelligence deals with the inventiveness and the ability to form original ideas, concepts, and imaginations. Creativeness is the ability to bring forth existence. So the higher and the creative intelligence, the more the probability of bringing forth existence of ideas, fantasies, and ruminations, etc. as actual reality. In addition, the higher the creative intelligence, the better the solution, finding, and problem solving in creative, original, and inventive ways. Musical intelligence deals with the technical appreciation for music and the comprehension of music on a profound level. The higher the musical intelligence, the higher the ability to appreciate the intricate notes and fluctuations of the instruments, ideas, and concepts behind the music and other fine details concerned with the appreciation of the craft. Intellectual intelligence deals with the faculty of reasoning and understanding objectively, especially regarding abstract matters. The higher the intellectual intelligence, the more the solidified foundation in mechanical, technical, factual, logistical, and logical aspects of the individual's intelligence and the utilization of these elements to make objective, conclusive points. Intellectual intelligence deals with the ability to make sense accurately. Individual intelligence. This deals with the distinction of self, originality, self-worthy, the ego, and its respective impulses, respective ideas. Individuality deals with the quality or character of a particular person or thing that distinguishes them from others of the same kind, especially when strongly marked. The higher the individual intelligence, the more in line someone is with their ego and the ability to control their egos. The lower the individual intelligence, the more susceptibility to outside ideas. 
So this means that <laughs> currently on Earth, the majority of the human beings, um, plebs, as it is said, um, tend to flow with the wind. So if they get a thought and then a feeling, they tend to just instinctively act on it without actually questioning themselves before the action that they take is put together. Instead, human beings tend to have a thought and feeling. They act correspondingly to it, whether it's a negative or positive, over positive or over negative, whatever that thought and feeling may be, they tend to act towards it instinctually, just, just impulsively, compulsively. They act on it, and then the action is created. And then after the actual event, the human being is wondering what just happened. Why are they put into a situation? Why are they, why has their life come down to a certain uh, uh, suffering or struggle or over-challenging, overburdening circumstance? Well, if we rewind, the human being wasn't educated in how to question or how to track their thoughts and feelings correspondingly. So with this information being given to the consciousness, this respective data can allow the human being to now question what they are about to do before it is done. Being a greater conduit of creation love, if you may. Continuing on. Idea intelligence deals with the awareness of signals rising from the subconsciousness. These signals are an after effect of information current swirling in the consciousness, which is then registered in the consciousness as an idea. The higher the idea intelligence, the higher the ability to comprehend signals from the subconsciousness. Fantasy intelligence deals with the ability of imagination and the ability to conjure up worlds of imagination and fantasy, creating concepts and may not yet be visible, creating concepts that may not yet be visible, but can possibly be someday and or simply fantasizing and ruminating for the ability to create even though the dreams will never come true. The higher the fantasy intelligence, the higher the ability to express in the arts of all forms. Character Intelligence deals with the mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual. The higher the character intelligence, not only the greater the ability to control the preceding actions concerning morality, however, also the higher the character intelligence, the greater the nobility, honor, uprightness, righteousness, etc. Consciousness intelligence deals with the awareness, knowledge, and the ability to perceive situations, facts, thoughts, feelings, ideas, etc. Consciousness intelligence operates as a priority intelligence type that is demanded by the creation energy, but unlike general intelligence, which is dependent on an overall ratio, consciousness intelligence uses the ratios to create its overall magnitude. The higher the consciousness intelligence, the higher the speed of perception. The ability to comprehend fine ideas and details and also to utilize other forms of intelligence and other needs of conscience such as the unconscious and subconscious in unison with the conscience or feeling and emotional intelligence in unison with creative intelligence, etc. And then there is general intelligence. General intelligence is the general overall ratio of intelligence types which often emerges as quote-unquote common sense. The higher the general intelligence, the more of a balanced ratio between all intelligence forms. So this would mean your relatability to all people, allowing yourself to be very adaptable to a concurring situation in which you are either enjoying or trying to neutralize to get yourself into the next corresponding day to come. The seven different states of matter. Solid, liquid, gas, quark gluon plasma, base, Einstein condensate, harmonic condensate, ionized plasma. Every full creation universe slash universal consciousness consists of seven universal dimensions or seven differently dimensioned universes like soap bubbles growing inside itself as its own individual expanding bubble. 
whereas each of these seven universes all coexist with one total all-encompassing universe, which we call creation universal consciousness slash universal creation, respectively creation universe. Creation universe are equipped with their own seven universal belts, like their own material belt, respectively, the fourth belt, and the other six purely spirit energy, respective fine energy belts. So we're all in a spiritual reality. We're all in a creative awakening reality that brings itself forward in an eternal, constant, fluctuating matter.